What's going on everyone? My name is Twig and today we are talking about the star named EOS which was released two days ago and is currently priced at $13.49 with the launch sale of 10% off $15. This title for those who don't know is a casual puzzle hidden object story game that has some neat mechanics and a cool art style. Before we get too far into the review I do want to mention that I review games after I get all achievements to obtain 100% and see most if not all that a game has to offer. In the case of this game, I experienced everything, got all of the miscellaneous achievements, and of course all the ones pertaining to completing the story. I've been posting my video reviews here on YouTube to document my journey to 700 perfect games, while also posting my written reviews on Steam. If you're a PC gamer, feel free to add me on there as I accept pretty much all of my friend requests. Without further ado, let's talk about the star named Eos, what I liked about it, and if there was anything that I didn't like. In the intro to the game, you're holding your mom's hand as she points out stars that are shining bright even during the day. After slowly opening your eyes, you realize that it was just a dream. You play as a boy named Dee, who is a photographer that is retracing his journalist mother's steps on a trip that she went on sometime in the past. This premise is pretty much played out throughout the entire game. You learn that when Dee was a child, he received letters from his mother while she was on her travels. The enveloped letters always included a beautiful photo of the places that she visited. The story is a little short and I don't want to give too much away, but while being guided by his mother's voice and by using his photography skills, D is on a journey to discover the truth of his mother's absence. If you have played a game with in-game photography before, it will be familiar because that is the main function in this title. Your character uses an old Polaroid camera that his mother has passed down to him. Their shared love for photography helps guide him on his journey, recreating his mom's old photos. The actual interactive parts of this game is neat because of the game's perspective. You play in first person, solving puzzles and taking photographs. The puzzles are neat, very traditional and pretty easy. Some of the puzzle mechanisms feel kind of like an escape room type of game, which I enjoyed because I love those types of puzzle games. There is no in-game hint system, but the puzzles do string together very well. There are even sliding puzzles, which are also some of my favorites. Taking photos with your Polaroid is a good time. Some of the photos you need to take have a very small window that you need to hit in order to get the shot. This being a hidden object game, the changing cursor helps signal interactions that need to be done to advance the chapter, which is nice so you're not hunting for those small points of interest for a long amount of time, even though I do enjoy that. The art style is really what drove me to the game. It is all hand drawn and in this anime style that really fits the tone of the game. What also helps the tone of the game is the music. The devs did a phenomenal job with the music selection which complements the story and really helps the more tear jerking section of the story. The game is organized into chapters, each at a different location. You move on from each chapter after recapturing the photo that your mom sent to you while on her travels. I personally enjoyed this puzzle game. Short, sweet, had good mechanics, some that I've seen quite a bit in my experience with puzzle games and some not so much. Overall the puzzles did seem a little on the easy side but I wouldn't say that's a bad thing. The photography mechanic was really neat and I liked that it played a big, pretty much main part in driving the story forward, showing the love between mother and son and their passion for photography. The story was good and they even let you go back and chapter select after finishing the story to do cleanup achievements that you may have missed which is always a plus. When you do go back to previous chapters you can't skip the dialogue cutscenes which kinda is a little pesky but not a big deal. I completed the game with around a little over an hour of game time which may be on the shorter side for people looking for a longer experience. I rushed through it though in order to get this review out for a game that is releasing tomorrow so I would suggest take your time and enjoy it if you're playing through it normally. It features a cool theme involving stars, memories, photography, and I have to mention some really really good voice acting. The voice actors added so much to the game and it really brought the story to life. I believe there is a demo still available if you do want to try this game out on Steam. I was debating on doing an achievement breakdown section for this review because the achievements are pretty simple and there are a ton of YouTube videos out there already showing how to tame them all. Like I said before, chapter select really helps you out if you need to pick up one or two after completing the story. Props to them for not making you play through the entire game again because a lot of the puzzle games do. A lot of achievements are tied to progressing through the chapters. Some are tied to secret codes that you have to put into puzzle locks and such. There's an achievement tied to maxing out your album, which means taking like 80 Polaroid shots or something. 
and then there are a few fun achievements tied to tasks like ringing the bell over and over in the train car scene or pressing all the buttons in the safe. 100%ing this game is not hard at all and won't take a lot of time. Real quick, I did want to mention that I went through and played one chapter on the Steam Deck and wanted to report that everything ran well. This isn't a super intensive game or anything, but the menus look good and the game ran fine. I expected it to though because it is also available to play on the Switch. The Star Named Eos is a fun game to play one evening and maybe revisit again after some time. If you enjoy hidden object puzzle games mixed with some photography elements, then this is right up your alley. There's another photography style game that I picked up on the Steam Summer Sale called Viewfinder that I want to play through soon, but the story was real good, the music was great, voice acting was killer, and I am a fan of the hand-drawn art style. There isn't too much more really, it should take you between 1 and 2 hours to complete, and it's an easy game to add to your perfect games list. Thank you all for watching, I hope this review brought some insight to this cool puzzle game title. The Steam page will be linked down below, but this game is also available on like every other platform too. Nintendo eShop, Xbox Series X and S, PlayStation Store, GOG. If you seem kind of interested in it, then you'll probably like it. If these types of games aren't your thing, then maybe grab it on a sale. If you're an achievement hunter looking for a platinum or perfect game, this is definitely one you need to add to your list. Thank you for listening to me talk. That's pretty much all I have for this one. Some exciting reviews and games coming up, so stay tuned and I will catch you all in the next one. Peace.